And the GOP race for the White House getting even more heated as Donald Trump once again goes after Jeb Bush's brother, the former president, of course, about the 9-11 attacks. Hello, everybody. Hope you're off to a great day so far. I'm Jenna Lee. And I'm John Scott. Donald Trump blasting Jeb Bush's claims that his brother, quote, kept us safe in the aftermath of 9-11. He claims things would have been very different if he had been in charge. Governor Bush says Trump's comments show a lack of seriousness. But Trump is not backing down. Jeb said we were safe with my brother. We were safe. Well, the World Trade Center just fell down. Now, am I trying to blame him? I'm not blaming anybody. But the World Trade Center came down. So when he said we were safe, that's not safe. We lost 3,000 people. It was one of the greatest, probably the greatest catastrophe ever in this country, if you think about it, right? Joining us now is Brett Baer, the anchor of Special Report. Uh, to be fair to Jeb Bush, I think his point about uh, him keeping us safe, meaning George W. Bush, was intended to uh, start at the moment the 9-11 attacks brought down the World Trade Center. I guess to Donald Trump's way of thinking, maybe that distinction doesn't exactly matter, Brett. All right, John. Uh, good morning. I, I think, to be fair to Donald Trump, he answered a question by Bloomberg on Friday uh, that started this whole thing. Then he reiterated it, uh, doubled down on Fox News Sunday, and then said it again in a different way on Fox and Friends uh, this morning. He has definitely stirred this up, uh, talking about 9-11 happening under George W. Bush, and therefore the country wasn't safe, but also adding that he doesn't think it would happen under a President Trump because of his strict immigration policies. I think looking back uh, post 9-11 to a pre-9-11 world with President Obama, uh, President Trump's uh, immigration policies is a little tough uh, to, to work out fact check wise. 16 of the 19 hijackers had legal visas uh, to be here and obviously there were a whole bunch of problems and the 9-11 Commission laid those out uh, before uh, President Bush uh, took office but uh, yet it is stirring up a lot of controversy and thereby a lot of attention and as we've seen a lot of times with Donald Trump, uh, sometimes these things only make his numbers go up. Right. He said regarding immigration, he said, I believe if I were running things, I doubt those families, I doubt those people would have been in the country. Um, but as is often the case, there are not a lot of specifics about how he would have accomplished that. Right. I mean, he points to he would have been tougher on visas, allowing people in, uh, and he would have definitely been tougher on people here illegally. And as I mentioned, 16 of the 19 uh, hijackers were here on legal visas. Now, you know, fighting these battles pre-9-11 about the 9-11 attacks is kind of an interesting ploy politically uh, uh, if it is that and he has obviously continued that as he's been questioned about it Jeb Bush is drawn out thereby defending his brother thereby connecting him to his brother again and uh, while he's saying that Donald Trump uh, is a reality TV star in a reality TV foreign policy uh, he's still there out talking about George W. Bush um, all right. Let me ask you about uh, uh, this issue. Uh, Ed Henry uh, just put it out in this Fox News alert that he's got three solid sources who say that Vice President Biden is likely to run. Uh, there is some question about the timing that he would make his announcement. But according to Ed Henry, Vice President Biden is is likely to get into this race for president. Uh, I'm sure you're you're hearing some things in Washington as well, Brett. But the question has yeah. always been, when would the vice president say he's in? He's under a lot of pressure from uh, Democratic Party le leaders if he's going to get in, to get in sooner rather than later. Well, you, that's right. And there has been this perception that he is going to run uh, here in Washington. The outreach to donors, the outreach uh, to party leaders, state party leaders. The thought was perhaps he's going to get get in at the Jefferson Jackson dinner in Iowa on Saturday night. Uh, but there's also another thought that, and this is again all mapping things out, Hillary Clinton did well by all accounts in the Democratic debate. Uh, it is seen that perhaps she's going to do well uh, as she has before in the Benghazi testimony. We don't know that yet, but it happens Thursday. And uh, if she does well in those two things, uh, where is the angle uh, for Vice President Biden? 
The thought was that perhaps he gets in before she testifies on Thursday, and there's some reporting out there that he might be getting in within the next 48 hours. We can't confirm that, but Ed's reporting is that three sources saying he is going to get in very likely and probably uh, in the next couple of days. You mentioned uh, Hillary Clinton's testimony later this week, I think on Thursday in front of the Benghazi committee. The partisan tensions are really getting thick on that committee. Trey Gowdy, uh, the chairman of the committee, is even telling his fellow Republicans, those who are not on the committee, he says should just shut up. Uh, about uh, about things that you don't know anything about that that referring to leaks from some Republicans who say uh, that the uh, committee's work is mostly about tearing down Hillary Clinton. Have you ever seen a committee uh, this tense, this divided, Brett? Listen, there's always politics involved in committee work. Uh, very rarely is there this unified effort to get to a, especially when you're talking about a presidential uh, candidate in the middle of the crosshairs uh, here in this testimony. I think that um, Trey Gowdy is trying to keep this substantive, uh, but all that has been said with Kevin McCarthy and another Republican and this whistleblower Gowdy denies that, but but it still set the, the preamble for this committee hearing. So the Republicans bar is going to be pretty high to be fair and substantive and not look like they're attacking Hillary Clinton, but to remember that since her last testimony, this entire private email server and hundreds of emails about Benghazi and Libya have come out. They weren't available before. Right. So how the Republicans handle this Thursday will be interesting to see. Well, and, and that is interesting because there's been so much criticism, criticism of the committee uh, suggesting that it's, it's really become an inquisition about Hillary Clinton's email practices. But as you point out, nobody knew about those practices until this committee was formed. And John, listen, there were a whole batch of emails that had never seen the light of day uh, that just were transferred to the committee within the past month. I mean, we're talking about new emails dealing with Benghazi and Libya. So for all of this talk about this is all about emails, well, in part it is about emails because some of those emails were never known in the seven previous committee hearings that dealt with Benghazi. Mm. And uh, we'll see how they handle it. But the bar will be high for Republicans uh, since all of this political back and forth before the committee hearing Thursday. The information lies in the emails, and, uh, and certainly there are ready attack lines or ready retort lines from Hillary Clinton that, that uh, Republicans have already given her. Be fascinating to watch. I'm sure you'll be talking about it tonight on Special Report. Brett Baer, thank you. Thanks, John.